Hi, and welcome back to another lesson. In this lesson, we're going to talk about playing with other people. Suppose a friend of yours who plays guitar uh, has come over and he says, let's play a song together. The song is simple, and your friend isn't a great guitar player, and he can only strum the chords in a pretty generic fashion. And this is how it sounds like. Now, the question is, if you want to play along with him, what should you do? Before I give you my sort of ideas on this, let's take a look at really how the guitar voices the chords you've just heard. So the song really has three chords. There is C, an F, and a G, all major chords. Now, the C chord on the guitar is actually voiced like this. So you have a C, E, G, C, G, C. And these are the actual notes played on the guitar. They're not played an octave below or above. It's these ones. The F is this. It only has five notes. It's an F, A, C, F, C. And finally, the G also has five notes, which are G, B, D, G, B. So really what your friend is strumming is a C, an F, and a G, all mixed in together. Well, when you two would meet up to play together, what you would maybe naively do is just try to play the way you would play the song alone. So you would have the chords and you would try maybe to play block chords uh, like this. Now, this will work well when you're alone, but when you're playing with another person, the two of you might clash. Uh, here's how it sounds together. Now, to resolve the clash, you can do one of two things, and I'll describe both solutions. The first solution is to keep out of each other's way. And there are different ways of doing this. Let me just uh, show two. <clears throat> so the first way is to figure out where on the spectrum of notes your friend is playing and just keep out of that frequency range. So you can see that your friend is occupying sort of this frequency range and it would make sense to keep out of it. So you could play either lower bass notes or you could play higher notes up here or of course uh, combine the two. Uh, so here, here's how it would sound.
Another way to keep outside of your friend's way is rhythmically. So your friend is has this animated accompaniment. So to differentiate yourself from him or her, you could play something that has uh, much less movement. Of course, the easiest thing would be to just hold chords. I can hold down a chord with an instrument that is not a piano. For example, an organ. Organs are really suitable for playing sustained chords. So here's an example of an accompaniment uh, which occupies the same frequency range as the guitar player but has a different rhythmic sense to it. I'm just holding down chords with the organ. Now I mentioned there are two solutions to the problem, and here's the second one. The second one is not to try and not to clash, <coughs> not to clash, but and to stay away out of each other's way, but actually to be as similar as possible to each other. So for this to work, you two really have to be synchronized and play at least rhythmically the same accents. Uh, and same strumming patterns and so forth. So for some patterns, like the one I played, uh, it's going to be a little bit difficult. But for other accompaniment part patterns, uh, it might be easier to do. For example, if the guitar is just doing something simple like that, you could also replicate this on the piano. This sort of thinking leads to a concept that is known as a wall of sound. So this is a technique that's been popularized in the late days of the Beatles by Phil Spector, in which you try to create sort of a mass or a unison of sounds that sort of occupy, they're very in sync, especially rhythmically, but they occupy the entire frequency range. Uh, these techniques are also used in doubling. So if, if you listen to the beginning of ACDC records like Back in Black, they have guitar, they have many, many guitars playing the same part over and over. And there are actually horror stories about how the guitar players were forced to get their parts extremely in sync with each other uh, under the sort of ruthless uh, coaching of their somewhat uh, sadistic producer. So that's basically your two options. You can either stay out of each other's way or you can really be in sync. The uh, second option is really for players who are a lot more comfortable with each other and requires uh, some rehearsing. So I would keep it for more professional settings. Of course, there is a third option, which is to tell the guitar player to shut up and maybe just strum simple chords while you do your thing. Well, this wraps up our current lesson. Uh, I hope you've learned something interesting and I will see you next time.